Hi again, everyone. This video is sponsored by contribution from Amy, and here's her story. Dear Ollie, I'm Amy, the stove lady, and I got another question for you. I was dating someone recently who turned out to be a narc. I met this date at work, the narc farm. He had recently moved to the area and is from the East Coast. He's a Hispanic bilingual who had allegedly spent some of his childhood in South America. He started to get to know me after he noticed me, and I noticed him for the first time in a meeting. He stopped by my office a few days after that meeting. The conversation seemed well. He asked questions about me, then I asked questions about him. He asked me out a weekend before Thanksgiving, so we just got together for an hour and talked. We had gone out only four times. He seemed like an open book. He asked me about drinking on three, con on three consecutive occasions. I told him I'm not a drinker and that I understand the difference between America's drinking and what drinking is to Europeans. By the third date, I, I brought up drinking, teasing him about it. When we went out to restaurants, I said, it's okay to drink in front of me. But each time he claimed that he didn't like to drink alone and would only drink if I would with him. Uh-oh. Okay. One of these people that has to get drunk with other people and then they turn into a different person. That's what I'm sensing here. Our dates were full of conversation. We had a few short phone conversations. I don't like to be on the phone for more than 30 minutes. And he realized that I prefer that over texting. Last Wednesday, he asked me out over the phone for Saturday, and I said fine, but left the details for later. When Friday came around, he approached me at my office and asked if I could see him after work. I could not see him right away. After I got home, he texted me to meet him at a coffee shop in my part of town. So I met him there and we talked. I tried not to say too much about myself, but he asked questions, like the ones the experts online say you should ask when first dating. I told him my future goals. He wanted to know more, but I could not tell him where or when, simply because I was not sure. I may be in a legal situation with my ex-narc boss and told him from the first date that I did not want to talk about work, but he would push that boundary. He asked me a question that had nothing to do with work, but he ended up discussing it but ended up discussing it, caught myself, stopped, and let him and let him know it. By the fourth and final date, he seemed to acknowledge it. But that is where the relationship turned in, into nothing. The next day, he took me out to a restaurant. After that, he started driving me around to look at Christmas lights. He said he was thinking about going back to his house to take an Uber downtown to the bars. He was driving me in an expensive vehicle, so I asked to protect the car, and he acknowledged so. I mentioned if we go to my house, I mentioned if we go to my house to watch SNL. He liked the idea and claimed he watched SNL all the time. He wanted to drive downtown, so we went there and stopped by a popular bar just to see how the crowd, how crowded it was. My bladder started hurting, so he took me to his house, which was close by, to use the bathroom. He showed me around his house, then asked me to sit on his new recliner. I sat down. He hopped on me and started kissing me. It was not romantic. I was stiff. I said it was time to go back to my house. He had a feeling we would kiss that. I had a feeling we would kiss that night but I thought it would be in his nice car or in a romantic way, and this was not it. I had a fear of intimacy. I thought it was from the mistreatment I had from my ex dark boss. While driving me back, I had a suspicious thought about his Uber idea and asked if he was thinking of having me sleep over his house after dark, after he drank at the bars. He said yes. He's 38, divorced with one kid, and I'm 40. So I was surprised because I haven't heard of such a thing since I was in my 20s. I had mentioned my interest in having a kid, and he said, and he on, on a later date talked seriously about that interest, but without claiming it, it was his interest. He did say without asking me that he was not seeing anyone else, 
to make me think he was more mature than that. I should have just let him drop me off, but I wanted to stick to the plan of watching SNL, even though I felt weary at this point. But it hadn't all synced yet. Too much dating at once. I showed him most of my house before sitting on the couch to watch TV. We started kissing again. He started criticizing me for not liking to French kiss and saying, we are adults here. You must have had someone slobber on you, criticizing me again. He asked if there was a TV in my room, and I said no. There was a point where he wanted, where he wanted to leave, and I questioned him on it, since we had an hour before SNL. He explained that he wanted to leave to let me rest. I explained that he said he was going to watch the program with me, so he stayed. He asked, what was I thinking when I asked him out? not romantic. This close interaction felt so weird and I thought it was me. Then he asked, what was I thinking? I sat straight up and boldly said, I told you that I don't like the French kiss and now you, and now you want to train me how? He started with the excuse, I am having a good time with you. I yelled to get the hell out of my house and he kept chanting his I am having a good time with you mantra as he walked out. This made me realize because all the abuse I've been through, I can only do short spurts of dating to give my mind time to absorb what's going on. I thought this was about my fear of intimacy, but this was creepy because I've dated narcs in the past, one Latino who tried to rape me, but when making out with them, they, they sweated, got warm, a little heavy breathing held me in their arms type stuff. However, this guy, when I put my hand on his chest, it was like touching a mannequin. He never tried to hold me. He ran his hand, he ran his hand through my scalp, com complimenting my thick hair, complimented my shoulder bone, and ran his finger over my eyebrows, but never complimented my looks as an entirety. I'm, in, I'm 40, but in good shape, not ugly, so this is peculiar. Is this guy not attracted to me? It makes me wonder if he was on a mission from work to find out more about me due to legal matters. I would appreciate your opinion on Mannequin Man. Thanks, Amy. That was my thought. Like, when he kept bringing up the work and the drinking, like, my thought was he wanted to get you drunk, get you loose, and then pump you for information at work. My... This guy, I think, he may not be spying for whatever you're dealing with with your ex anarch boss. He might just be looking for any information to screw you all over with. You understand? He's like, seems like he's one of these leeches. He's one of these leeches you find at work that that looks to. to looks to advance by taking other people down. You know what you're explaining, like he never complimented on looks and he's pointing out specific things. It was like a mannequin, like he's going through motions. No passion about him, no, no anything. It's not necessarily because he wasn't attracted, he could have still been attracted to you, but I think this guy has uh, had, a, had a bigger mission. Either he is spying, for your, for, for your other situation with your ex-boss, or he's just looking for work information to use against you for his own personal benefit. I would think that the second would make more sense. I absolutely think the second would make more sense then, because that's a long way to go. Because if you get caught doing that, as a business that you're setting somebody up and then they're going to sleep with that person to get in for no, 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 no. that's not that doesn't fly that's just not going to fly right? you get so much more trouble and a co uh, any company that's that, that that's not run some kind of friggin ponzi scheme scam type of place there's no way that's going to happen what I think is happening is this guy is just looking for information for his own benefit. He's a gigolo. 
he's a gigolo. He's a he's a vampire. He uses people for whatever you can get at him. And he sees you, an attractive 40-year-old in decent shape, single. So you're a perfect target because you're somebody who you told now you told them that you want to want to have another kid. So you're vulnerable. He knows you're looking to attach and you're looking to so you're somebody you can have if he gives you the supply you need, okay, you're somebody who could be vulnerable to fall for him really quick in his mind and get that information that he can then use against you and you'd be out of a job or for whatever he wants to use it for. But I think this guy is all about his own personal benefit more than helping your ex -life. If that opportunity comes up for him to do it, he will. If it benefits him, he'll use anything he can to benefit himself. I don't think he's on a mission for the other people. He's on a mission for himself. So I would just keep my distance from him at all costs. Tell him nothing that he, he doesn't need to know and keep it on a professional basis. Because this is the type of guy, I mean, this seems like he's, he was grooming you. Grooming you for information, wanting to get you drunk, get you chatty about work, get intimate with you, get some kind of trust. You know, you told him what your future plans were. So he's giving you the guys that he's interested in a long-term future and all that. It's all for his personal benefit. As soon as he gets what he needs from you, he's going to screw you over and you never hear from him again. Because that's how these type of guys operate. Absolutely. I know and I know I'm right. So thank you, Amy, for your contribution. Thank you for your uh for your story. I, I appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover or a narcissist you'd like to expose, you know what to do with the PayPal and my email link in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ollie Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon. Bye.